Okay, guys, welcome back to All Nerd Everything. And it's been a long while since I've done anything with wrestling related. I think it's been about maybe, God, maybe a year and a half. And I wanted to talk, wanted to discuss NXT Halloween Havoc, which was last night. And I absolutely love NXT. I loved it since the golden black days and I think that NXT is over the past year has seen a massive resurgence which I absolutely love and I think it's getting to a point where a lot of people a lot more people are tuning in to NXT that weren't fans before which I absolutely love and like I said Halloween Havoc discussion and okay so the Opening match, so I'm gonna break these down from matches to match, from match to match, and the opening match was Tony D'Angelo defending the NXT North American Championship against the Rula the Kakara Obafemi, who, in my opinion, I think they should have kept the North American Championship on him a little bit longer. In a, but that's neither here, neither here nor there. But this match was a tables, ladders, and scares match. A, pun, a play on tables, ladders, and chairs. But in this match, you had to pin your opponent rather than climb the ladder and ret retrieve the championship. Now, leading up to the event, Oba beat down the family. He put them through chaos. So I assume that you know, because he got rid of them, that he was going to take back his championship. However, I was wrong. But T Tony D'Angelo successfully defended against Obafemi, and this match was a banger. I mean, this was a great match to start off the show. Obafemi is one of those big dudes. It's rare to have a, it's rare to have a big dude in professional wrestling that can talk and back it up in the ring. And Obafemi can do both of these things and he is an absolute savage on the microphone and he I can't wait for him to take that NXT championship I love Trick Williams but Obafemi needs to be thrusted skyrocketed into the main event scene before he heads up to the main roster and I could definitely see him main eventing a WrestleMania someday but yeah this match was an absolute banger it took four people to beat Obafemi, so Obafemi did look strong going out, even in defeat. So hopefully he can, you know, recover. Hopefully he can recover from this and, you know, go on to the main event picture and take the title from Trick, which I would absolutely love to see. Now the next match. Next match was the tag team match of Julia and Stephanie Vercure. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name, against Roxanne and Corey Jade. And I didn't even notice this until just now, but until I checked Roxanne's Instagram. But Roxanne and Corey Jade, their outfit, they had matching outfits for, to parody of uh, the the little girls the little twins from the shining movie which was absolutely terrifying but julia and stephanie have been on a roll since they since they joined the company nxt has the best women's division i don't know what the hell happened to triple h when he finally took over because the main roster the women on the main roster have been suffering dramatically and it is really sad because they deserve so much better and we need more non-title feuds on the main roster which we sparingly get but this this tag this tag match in my opinion is probably was probably the second best match on the show after the previous match I just talked about over Femi and Tony D'Angelo this match was really, really great. Core Jade 
still looking good after a uh, knee injury, after being gone for, God, I don't know how many months it's been, uh, eight, nine, something like that. And But am I the only one that does not like Roxanne's heel turn? I'm not feeling it. I'm not a fan of it. And I love Roxanne as a performer, but as a heel, uh, a lot of her promos come off like she's trying too hard to be a bad girl and it's just not it's just not doing it for me. I I think that she should be turned back into a baby face because it's not going to work out in the long run, especially when she gets to the main roster. I can't imagine a heel Roxanne and a heel Nia Jax. It just wouldn't work out. Or a heel Roxanne and a babyface Charlotte doesn't does it mix well with the other. But this is, like I said, banger match. Roxanne and Julia walked out with the W. And after the match, Zarya appeared in the rafters looking down on them. So it appears... It appears as if that Stephanie is going to go after Roxanne's title, seeing how she was the one that pinned Roxanne. I don't care who it is, but I would like it to be Stephanie. But yeah, this was a definitely a banger match. And next up, we have... Oh, God. We, we had the ambulance match between... Andre Chase and Ridge Holland and honestly this was the bathroom break match I did not care about this match at all whatsoever and I just find Ridge Holland kind of boring and I never rocked with him when he first came in the company and I still don't even you know even if he even if the thing with Biggie was an accident that wasn't the first time something like that happened. And I can't look past it. I'm sorry. And yeah, he beat Andre Chase in the ambulance match. And this match was whatever. It didn't pick up until like the last like five minutes. That's when we actually saw some sort of, you know, interaction with the crowd. They were m mostly chanting for pumpkins the whole time to be used and um yeah this was this was whatever like i said bathroom break match and next up next up after that was the women's gauntlet match where kalani jordan defended her nxt north american women's championship against fatal influence and she defeated jasmine nix and then jc jane however she lost it to fallon henley Yes, Fallon Henley. And the match was good. Uh, Kalani Jordan definitely had, is definitely one of the best up, upcoming rising stars in, you know, the company. And I can definitely see her putting on banger matches with a lot of the women on the main roster when she finally gets up there. But this match, I, Kalani Jordan, she carried... I mean, she carried this match, and I think it was de it was definitely better than that ambulance match that we saw, and she lost the title to Fallon Henley, and I def because of the numbers game that Fatal Influence pulled on her, and I definitely wasn't expecting her to lose the title, but seeing how the the fallout of the match with Zarya attacking fatal influence and her setting her sights it seems like she's setting her sights on that nxt north american women's championship and it's very sad that fallon henley's first ch singles championship is going to come to a short run because it feels like they only put the title on her just so they could put it on either zaria or or Julia. It feels like it's going to be one of those two, but I have a feeling that she's not going to keep the title for that long. And finally, we get to the main event, which was Trick Williams against Ethan Page. I can't 
for the love of me, remember what type of match this was. It was basically no DQ, fall scout anywhere, no count out. But I don't think this was the their best match between them. I think that if I had to put them in order, I would definitely say the battleground match is number one. I really love that match. And then I would actually put them in order. I would say the first one at Battleground, the second one, the CW premiere, and then the third one, which was this one. But um, I hope that Trey Williams can move on after defeating Ethan Page again. But after that, he was attacked by Ridge Holland. And for the love of me, I don't know who wants to see that at all. I don't care about that match. Just, it seems like they're, it seems as if they are lacking top heels in the main event picture, which is sad to say. And, you know, while Trick Williams was getting beat down by Ethan Page and Ridge Holland, Bubba Ray came in and saved the day because Bubba was being antagonized earlier in the show by Ridge Holland, once on the pre-show and the other on the PLE earlier in the night, and he gave Ridge Holland a warning. Two strikes, you're out. Uh, two strikes, and if you get to a third one, there won't be any more talking. And I guess that was a, I guess that was the third strike. Overall, this pay-per-view was okay on a rating. Rating scale, like letter scale, I'd probably give this probably maybe a B. Overall, I thought the pay-per-view was pretty solid. My only complaint was I wasn't really a fan of that ambulance match. And I don't like how Fallon Henley is going to be a transitional champ. If that was the case, they should have just kept the title on Kalani Jordan. But... Let me know what you guys think of this pay-per-view. Uh, what are your predictions for what's going to happen next? And until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Yeah.